The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the hit show, Sheer Alchemy, with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get ready to stir up your passions, identify your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Just say yes to explosive abundance. Leslie Fontaine is a transformation catalyst and clairvoyant who uses her intuitive and energetic gifts to catapult listeners into living the life they were born to live. Whether it's shifting from scarcity to abundance, from emotional pain into joy, or from illness into health, Leslie will help you step into the true essence and power of all that you are with the help of the Ascended Masters and Archangels. You will not be the same. Now, here's your host, Leslie Fontaine. Hello, hello. This is Leslie Fontaine. This is Sheer Alchemy. This is our opportunity, all of us, to choose some part of ourselves that is showing up today to make the shift, to make the change, to step into some part of ourselves that is authentic, that is true, that is powerful, that is truly wonderful. You are here on purpose. You are on the planet on purpose. You have a light that needs to be shown to so many that are around you. And whenever we are letting our fears sort of cover over who we are, we dim the light a bit. And we all know what that feels like. We all know what it looks like. We can all sort of cringe inside, can't we? Well, this is a fantastic show today. We are talking about releasing the fear of intention, and the fear of taking action. And I talk a lot about fear because I am one for exposing these things. When we expose our fear, we can bring it to light and we can decide if it's true for us, if it's justified, if it's really a part of our reality, and do we want to release it? And You know, you can talk to a lot of people and on the surface, they'll say, sure, I want to release my fears. Of course, I want to let go of that. Of course, I want abundance. Of course, I want my loved one. I want the finances. I want the adventure. I want the new role. But ultimately, when we dig deeper, we find out that there are reasons that we are holding on to what we have. And you all know me well enough to know this isn't a shame fest. We do not use um, any of those kinds of energies to look, nor do we use guilt. So the neat thing about the work we do today is that when guilt surfaces and when shame surfaces and when some of these kind of cringing feelings surface within our field, this is our opportunity. This is what's showing up for us today. And I use the word us because none of us are done. We are always evolving, always shifting, always growing. And I want you to know that if someone hasn't told you today what a great job you're doing on your walk, on your path, on your ascension work, on your soul growth, on the things that you're choosing and being brave and bold to do, then I'm telling you today, you are doing a wonderful wonderful job. There are many, many, many of us right now working hard to shine the light. And what does that mean? Every time we shift our vibration, every time we release a fear, every time we release baggage, anything in our ancestral line, anything in our past lifetime fears, any, you know, karma that we want to bring into completion, any truth that we begin to step into, our light gets brighter and brighter, and that's what we're shining in the world. We certainly don't hear very much about that on the news, do we? We hear all the bad news. That's what news is designed to do. It's designed to let us know every crisis, every bad behavior, every war, every difficulty, every quagmire it is not there to tell us what's great what's going on and i can honestly tell you that around the world people are holding the light people are bringing in beautiful wonderful energies people are being healed people are uh, witnessing you know the miraculous shifts of energy that occur in their lives whether it's through you know lifting heavy energies in their own field or watching what happens when they encourage and coach others you know there are so many examples of fantastic news around the world so if you need a little time to hear some good news maybe turn down the the media news a bit and and realize that there is some fantastic news going on around the world. So we're talking about releasing the fear of intention 
and the fear of action. You know, this sounds young, doesn't it? You know, when we are afraid to step into ourselves, step into our truth, do something different, choose a new job, step into an intimate relationship, doesn't that sound young to you? It sounds like a child, right? It sounds like somewhere we learned some lessons that we had no power to change change our lives. And now we're adults and we do have that power, but we're still acting from that place as if we can't, as if something terrible will happen if we step into our power. So what's important to understand about fear is that fear is victimization. It's something that holds us back. It's something that keeps us entrenched and keeps us from stepping out into something that we desire. And it keeps us behind a closed door. You know, some of us won't even leave our homes. Some of us are, are terrified of change. Some of us are, are scared to death of rejection. Just it's the most devastating pain we could even imagine. So when we, over time, stop stepping out into our truth and stop becoming who we are, energies of depression and guilt and heaviness and darkness can kind of, you know, take us over. When we stand in fear, we choose not to really protect ourselves from anything, right? We can almost go into a state of inertia, non-movement, not creating anything anymore, not expanding ourselves anymore. We just almost get smaller and smaller and smaller. I can tell you, honestly, I have had times like that in my life, haven't you, where you would either just retreat more and more and more until, you know, you would almost become invisible and not available to the rest of the world. And then we would come out again at another time. And we either came out through therapies or we came out through the encouragement of others. Or, you know, we began to pull our lives back together and to step into something greater. What I found through some of those experiences is it's given me a depth. It's given me uh, the profundity to, to look at myself and to look at others with a lot of compassion, with a lot of empathy. We don't live in fear just because we decided to do that one day. None of us do that. This stuff is almost taught to us. You can feel it. You know, I know a lot of people who have learned fear from their family growing up. You know, maybe you adopted your mother's fears and your father's fears, or you adopted the fear of your culture um, or the fear of something different. You know, you can trace back where it happened if you really want to. So now I'm talking about the crux of something that is the essence of what we want to talk about today. And that is to go to the beginning, to go to that time, that moment when that fear became a part of you. You see, it wasn't always a part of you. You didn't get born with that fear. Now, some of us have learned to carry our family energies, but we weren't born with our soul essence. Our soul essence didn't have this fear. So we learned it. We acquired it. We took it on. Some of us took it on as a service to our families. Truly, we did that. We took on the burdens of the family. We adopted it. We thought we had to. We were told that. Some of us got, you know, deathbed commitments from <clears throat> loved ones passing on who said, you know, promise me when I'm gone, you will, dot, dot, dot. So, you know, those kinds of things that come from external to you. The question now is, why are we still holding on to those fears? Why do we not want to shift out? And that's the beauty of the show today. I'm really looking forward to covering this. And the other part is, why do we choose to remain in a place where we are afraid of the action that might come to us? For example, I have a lot of people that will say to me, well, source didn't come through for me, or the divine didn't come through. Well, I thought this would happen and it didn't. You know, I got guided to go do something. And often what you'll find out is that The guidance came, but we took no action. We chose not to do it. Or we we whittled it down. We compromised. We we made the vision smaller because we were terrified that it would be unmanageable by us. And this is the essence of fear. This is this, am I capable of stepping into this grand design, this grand idea? What if I'm not? What if I'm not competent? And I truly believe often that our fear 
is about our competence. And I don't just mean job performance. It means, am I competent to be intimate with a partner? Am I competent to create a life with a partner? Am I competent to learn a new role? What if I'm slow? What if I don't do it very fast? Am I competent to step into a whole new field and learn about it? And I don't know a thing about it yet. Is the fear that I won't be fast enough, smart enough, that I'll be judged, that I'll be made fun of? Will all of the uh, past experiences of being shamed and humiliated by kids on the playground come back to me? Honestly, that's how old some of this stuff is for us. So I want you to think about where some of your fears are coming from. Because ultimately, when we're creating this life of ours and we're creating a life every day, we hit some double binds. We may say we want a relationship, but we don't want to do what's required to have one. Now, that's not something that's uncommon. Many of us have these double binds. So we want to take a look at where we get frozen in our field, what stops us. This is going to be a fabulous show. I hope some things are coming up for you today as far as What has been a fear of yours? I don't want you to be afraid of your fears. Isn't that a great line? Don't be afraid of your fears. I really do mean that. Don't be afraid of your fear today. Allow yourself to let it present to you so you can see it for what it is. And when we come back, we are going to talk about how we step through this stuff, how we begin to expand and shine our light. So if you're interested in getting some work done today with the Ascended Masters, the Archangels, the healing teams, they are totally here, totally showing up. And the number to call is 800-930-2819, 800-930-2819. You are listening to Leslie Fontaine, and we are talking about releasing the fear of intention and action. Brand consultant and coach Jen Morgan is here with Radically Distinct Radio to help maximize your brand's power to produce results. Whether you're a person with a dream and unsure where to start or a CEO of a successful company wondering what's next, Jen Morgan and the RAD Method empowers you to play to your strengths and focus your competitive edge so you can show up in the world as your most powerful brand. Go to JenMorgan.com or call 206-972-5366. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? Experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals? Tune in to Spiritual Diagnostics Radio with psychic visionary healers Carol Dorian and Suzanne Evans. Discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life. Tune in every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit spiritualdeed.com. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425 425- Four five one zero four zero four. Artie Hoffman is the hottest psychic with the warmest heart and the host of the hit show Angels and Answers. A renowned psychic, medium, spiritual life coach, and an entertaining motivational speaker, Artie has helped over 15,000 people with his amazing intuitive gifts, his passion, and his humor. Call 877-ANGEL-02 to schedule a personal reading or to have your own psychic Artie party. That's 877-ANGEL-02. And visit ArtieHoffman.com and Angels and Answers on Facebook. 
Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the com. And we are back. This is Leslie Fontaine. You are listening to Sheer Alchemy. And I want to talk a little bit about what I do and what this show is about. You know, a lot of times we don't know what really stops us. We don't know what is blocking us. And a lot of what's blocking us is energetic. Some of it requires coaching. Some of it requires therapy. But there are some things in us that are old contracts and agreements on the energetic level that keep us hooked into um, ways that we cycle energy. Basically, we can be attracting the same partners, the same uh, bosses, the same circumstances over and over. And it's like a self-fulfill- self-fulfilling prophecy. We keep repeating the same things over and over and over again, and we don't really change. So when we decide we want to change, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for all of us because clearly any one of us would say we are comfortable with the familiar. With the work of the Ascended Masters, the Archangels, what is wonderful about inviting their participation is that it creates a very safe energetic field around us. It creates a tremendous amount of support and it helps us to work with higher level energies to clear out some of the lower level energies. And some of us have been repeating contracts and agreements that we no longer want to do. Some of us have made vows in other lifetimes that are still at work now. You know, we can have a point of view about something, but no matter what, we do the opposite. And a lot of times we can find a vow or an old contract that is tied to that. So the work with the Ascended Masters and Archangels and the healing teams is to help us shift to a higher frequency so that we can do the kind of work necessary to remove some of these agreements. So I want you to know about that. If you ever want to reach out to me, you can go to my website at lesliefontaine.com. That's L-E-S-L-I-E-F-O-N-T-E-Y-N-E.com. And there you will find the kinds of sessions I do and also some meditation and uh, teaching tracks that you can download or or purchase uh, at your convenience. So let's talk about this fear thing. We have been talking about how fear can run our lives and how we want to shift that energy out of our field. So the first thing that we have to understand is that we really do want to release the fear. And, And that is a legitimate question. We often don't always want to do that. You know, I have worked with many people that will explain to me why their lives are the way they are. And so I ultimately have to ask, well, do you want it to stay that way? Because it sounds like you're telling me you'd like it to stay this way. Because if we choose to change, if we choose to lift the fear, we choose to release the contract, then we are really, truly going to experience something that is a bit unknown to us and we can be afraid of that we can be afraid that maybe we're not strong enough or competent enough to handle what that change might be when we choose to release a fear we're taking responsibility for our lives and you know the big r word responsibility is thrown around sometimes almost in a threatening way and i'm not trying to do that but Responsibility means that I understand that each moment in my life, I am experiencing choice. I experience whether I go to work or not today. I experience whether I drive a car or not today. I experience whether I, you know, choose to spend money or not spend money. I choose whether to be um, loving and compassionate or I choose to be stubborn and grumpy. These are all things that I have in my power to choose to act otherwise is is kind of a victimized stance right to say well i can't help it the situation is what it is now we hear a lot of people say stuff like this but then we go well what do i do about it well where i'd like to start 
is do you want to shift out of it? If not, and there is no judgment on this, the question to say would be, well, why not? What is the payoff in this fear? What am I getting out of staying exactly where I am? What am I being protected from by not choosing to step out of this fear and into a new life? Now, often accompanied with the choice of stepping out of the fear is, well, what if everything doesn't just work out perfectly? So you have to then define, well, how is it that I want things to work out exactly? What is it that I'm saying needs to happen, needs to unfold for me to be okay? Often what we are saying is that we want to feel completely taken care of when we step out of the fear and into the new situation. So we have an idea of how we think everything should work out. Often we are not accepting that a shift is taking us into a better place. It's just one that we don't recognize. So if we can't get our questions answered about the unknown, we hold on even tighter to our current circumstances. We hold on because it's familiar, we understand it, we get it. So let's go to the bottom of the depths of our fear right now. Let's go to the core. There's something that we want to do. There's an intention we want to set. In that moment of setting the intention, we realize we really could do it. You really could walk into the new situation, step away, create something. Sometimes we hold ourselves back and go, well, I couldn't possibly do that now. Well, you know you could. You know that's not true. You could do anything right now. So then we start justifying and rationalizing about timing. Well, the time's not right. It's not the right time. When the kids grow up, when the boss changes, when, you know, I reach retirement age, when this, when that. We start putting all these conditions and we start rationalizing. That is not the same as getting guidance to create something new. Okay, so take a look at some things that have come to you about what you want to create, what you want to step into what you truly enjoy. And just say yes right now in this moment. Just say yes. Just allow it. Now allow the effects of that yes to permeate all the different levels of you. Go through your entire field right now. How does your heart feel when you said yes to that? Did it feel giddy, excited, happy? Go into your power center. How did it feel? A little tight? A little nervous? How about your security center? Did it feel afraid and small? You see, all of these are clues. All of these are signals. Did you start to hear the voice of your mother and the voice of your father or the voice of your boss or the voice of your culture or the news? Did anything come to you, start explaining to you that you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't step into that? Well, what will happen if... Allow that yes to permeate every single level. Now, some of you are doing this. I can already feel you. And now let's bring in the Ascended Masters and the Archangels. Let's allow their presence to come right now as we go from the top of your crown, going into your source connection, your God connection, where, you know, you get a sense of, you know, this, this, this beautiful light that, um, is divine intelligence, is divine awareness. Feel your heart space opening up. Just notice what's happening right now as you allow their presence to come through. Notice where you hit the block maybe in your solar plexus. And ask yourself if you're willing to release the stubbornness or the fear so that you might be willing to step out that door. You know, some of us don't step out the front door because we walk the whole thing through. We go, okay, I'm going to step out the front door. It's going to be raining. The car's not going to start. Uh, the person I want to go see is not going to be there. And we could just walk the whole thing all the way through and then not even get going. So that's how our guidance 
gets choked. So pay attention right now. Notice where you typically get choked. Now in that place, ask yourself, do I want to continue to get choked in this place? Does this serve me? Is this providing some kind of support to my life, some justification for the structure of my life? Do I need this right now? Is this necessary right now to my reality? These are all legitimate questions. It's okay. Just ask yourself that. We're looking at what's embedded in your field right now. What holds you in a position? What is the ultimate fear? Now, we'll take a look and see, are there some vows in your field? Like, I will never let go of my family. I will never go back to that town. I will never, you know, fill in the blank. You know, did you make a promise or a commitment in another lifetime or even this lifetime? Did you, you know, make commitments to your your family line? Just take a look at at what has kind of held you, some beliefs, some things that hold you in traction. Just be open to that, all right? And now ask yourself, am I willing to let go of that? If I let go of that, what is it that I fear the consequence will be? See, often we think that if we release these things, there will be no love and there will be no security. We will be completely abandoned. We'll be completely alone. And we will be fully unsupported in who we are. And that, if you go to the core of just about every single choice we have, it comes to that. Who will I be without? Will I be alone? Will I ever be supported without these things that I know and understand? So this is deep stuff. Take a look at what's happening in your field. Jot some things down that are coming to you. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what could be on the other side of that intention. This is Leslie Fontaine, and if you're interested in doing some work today, the number is 800-930-2819, 800-930-2819. Are you and your family looking for one manageable lifestyle change that will positively impact your health? Look no further. That change begins inside your drinking glass. Learn how to put a lid on junk drinking by sipping from a recipe collection of colorful, fresh, tasty, wholesome fruit and vegetable blends. Get your copy now of Sip the Garden. Fun, easy drinks for a healthier family by T. Carrie Mitchell. Visit lifestyle120.com for information on how to order. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. Are you sick of feeling overworked with no motivation? Take a break from the daily grind. Life coach Nicole Eisler is here to provide a healing journey of optimism. Passionate and caring, Nicole is no ordinary soul. Her dedication to helping everyone has no limit. Witness the power of positivity. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific for Positivity Party Radio with Nicole Eisler on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit BigDreamAwakening.com.
Tune in to The Michael Shane Show the third Tuesday of each month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com and connect with the ascended beings to raise your vibration and manifest the life you desire. Get ready to receive healing through the transphysical mediumship of Reverend Michael Shane and the ascended beings. Visit MichaelShane.com. That's M-Y-C-H-A-E-L, Shane.com, and call 425-971-6632 to schedule your full healing session now. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. And we are back. This is Leslie Fontaine. This is Sheer Alchemy. And we are talking about the experience of fear as it affects our intentions and our actions. And we would not be talking about these things if we were not wanting to shift and to step into a better version of ourselves. You know, so these things come up on purpose to be addressed, to be dealt with. And, you know, just a reminder that fear is not physical. Fear is not any more physical than um, other aspects of attraction. You know, all energies like this are not physical. So our emotions are not physical, right? Um, Fear may be a more comfortable mode because we've learned that our fear somehow protects us. It keeps us safe. But we haven't learned that our truth, our soul truth, our desires um, can lead us into a better life. And so we sort of hold on to what we know versus what we don't know. And the more we tackle these things, the more we discover, you know, that not that it was in our imagination, but we discover we've been letting something hold us back all this time that wasn't really that important. If we're not stepping into something because of fear, um, we're not valuing that choice the way we could. Honestly, let's just be honest with this because courage is overcoming that fear, right? Courage is stepping through a fear and We wouldn't need the courage if there wasn't something that we thought was worthy of our fear. So often we see something that we want to create and we're a little afraid. So we want to nail what it is. Is it competence? Is it abandonment? Is it, you know, and I'm talking about the results here of whatever action that we think we might take. What is the loss that we fear? What is the choice that we're afraid to make? What is the consequence that we believe will uh, occur if we make certain kinds of choices? And we ask ourselves, am I ready to let this go? We fear the release of the fear because what we don't want to really admit is that our fear is our protector. And we've learned that. So here we are stepping into a higher version of ourselves, having an opportunity with whatever fear is presenting to us in our lives, in our person. You know, we're not judging anyone. We're not looking and comparing. We're not doing any of that. We're looking at what's showing up for each of us today. And now we're saying, yes, I want to release this. I want to clear this. So that's the intention. All right. And the next part of the intention is I want to step into this new part of my life, this new creation, this vision I have. Every one of us has a vision and a desire. Every one of us has things that we we love, that we care about, that we're interested in. If we say we don't know, often it's because we've just covered it over for so long with all of the other uh, baggage of life. But it's in there, all right? So maybe that's your mission today is to uncover what you truly love and to not be afraid. Some of us know so much better what other people want than what we know we want for ourselves. And if that's the case, which, you know, in a way is a definition of codependency and enabling, then 
the message today may be, hey, it's time to live my life. So let's explore ourselves without judgment. You know, maybe we don't really want to get a divorce, write a book, travel to Tahiti, start a new business. Maybe we've had the fantasy and we really don't want to do it. So are we judging ourselves for that? Or do we really want to do it and we truly desire to move the fear out? Sometimes we need an honesty check. You know, are these really my desires? You know, I may have told this story, but I came from a very adventurous family. Uh, My family traveled all over the world, but they did really, I mean, risky things, very risky. You know, safety was of no concern. I can promise you that. And when I grew up, I didn't have a very good safety meter. I didn't know that, you know, danger could actually hurt you, you know, or kill you even. Um, And so I thought that I needed to be as adventurous as my upbringing had been. And what I found out over time was that that wasn't really me. I was taking on the values and um, propensities of my family And it really wasn't my own truth. So I had to get real with that because I thought, well, gosh, am I dumbing myself down here? Am I not being as courageous as I should be? Not as adventurous? I really am a homebody. Do I want to just, you know, hang out and, um, you know, contemplate the universe? Or or what is it? What, What was my modified version? I tell you this story because some of us have visions and dreams and goals that really aren't ours, or we think we should have them, or we think we should want them, but we have no interest in applying the time to acquire them. You know, it takes time to write a book, and it takes a commitment to create a good relationship, and it takes some planning to uh, go on an adventure and to save for it. So it can we be honest and take a look at ourselves and go, you know, I really don't want that. I really don't want to do that. So some of us are judging ourselves a little harshly for things we've never done that honestly we never wanted to do. So that's one category. And the other category is, what do I want to do? What do I want to create? What is important? So go to one of those double binds that you have. And a double bind is where, you know, we want to be at the mountain and the beach at the same time. All right, that's a double bind. Kind of hard to do, right? Um, It's where, you know, we want to be with the loved one And we want to be independent. Kind of hard to do unless you have a partner who says, you know, I want to be independent too. So, you know, we'll live apart and we'll see each other every other week. You know, you can create relationships like that. That's not hard to do. But get to the bottom of what your double bind is about. Now, if you have a double bind that is artificial, and what I mean by that is that you don't really want a relationship. You like the idea of it. And believe me, I have loved the idea of love. You know, the idea of love is so much easier than doing love. That's a joke. It's true. It's true. So think about the things that you really want to apply your energy to and the things that you don't. Sometimes we find out, you know what? I don't really want to work very hard at anything at all. I'm just kind of you know, lazy about it. If a relationship doesn't work right off the bat, I don't want it. If uh, I can't just go find a job easily, I don't want one. You know, we don't want to struggle. We don't want to have a hard time. So we have to look at parts of ourselves either that, you know, are withholding, lazy, you know, noncommittal, abandoning, want to play it safe, want to stay protected. It's okay. But A lot of times we have real double binds, which is that we want two things very strongly that are counter to each other and they keep us in stasis. They keep us paralyzed. And then there are others that are kind of artificial, which we have to get real about our true desires and we don't really want them. So how does all this apply to fear, intention and stepping into things? It applies a good bit because the fear is that what if I step into something I don't really want? What if I 
you know, step into creating something that really wasn't my desire. It was my mom's desire, my dad's desire. I wanted to be a lawyer. They wanted me to be an accountant, whatever. Um, You know, you get to the truth of it that you're not living your own life. So maybe today's opportunity is I want to create my own life today. I want to create my own truth today. What is it? Can I be bold enough and brave enough to look at it and to know truly that what I want is to stay exactly where I am, to be doing what I'm doing, that I'm holding energy where I'm holding it. And I want to release any old karma, any old fear, anything that is no longer resonating with my energy level where it is and take the performance requirements off of it. Now, how do we get afraid of action? If we are used to having kind of a passive energy with spirit, then we want everything to come to us. But all of us carry both the masculine and the feminine within our field. So getting guidance, receiving guidance, receiving energies, that's kind of, you know, the passive form. And then the active form is now taking action on it. So do you find that you hold back when it comes to action? So let's bring in the Ascended Masters and the Archangels now. Let's bring in the healing teams and let's see what you want to do about the taking of action. Do you want to engage with them? Do you want them to go ahead? We've got runners and ministering spirits and light beings and all that can be participating with you to step into a passion. Are you finding that you don't want anything to develop over time, that you would rather these things just happen instantly or you get very impatient? So see, there's so many aspects to the things that hold us back, the things that we're wanting to create, where we're wanting to go with our lives. Take a look at all of this. These are wonderful opportunities to get a coach. These are wonderful opportunities to shift energy if that's what's going on. These are wonderful opportunities to go learn a new field, to practice a new skill, to draw in loved ones, to renew vows, to recommit to a relationship. There's so many things that can be coming to you right now about what you want to create. But one thing I do know is that whatever we choose to step into, we do have to commit. And when we see ourselves holding back, let's examine that fear. Let's check out what it is that's the block there that stops us from stepping into our truth. And then we know whether we want to release that or not. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about that and bring this whole story in for a landing. keep your lifestyle in retirement? It's a question people often wonder about. Ask Ameriprise Financial Advisor Jeff Packman about the new Confident Retirement Approach. You and Jeff can break down retirement planning step-by-step to get the real answers you need. Call Jeff Packman Financial Advisor today at 425-453-0272. Office is located at 601 108th Avenue Northeast, Suite 1800, Bellevue, Washington, 98004. The Confident Retirement Approach is not a guarantee of future financial results. Investment and advisory products and services are made available through Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, a registered investment advisor. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member of FINRA and SIPC. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine. When we try to control the manifestation of our desires, we unfortunately limit the possibilities. We reduce them down to the 3D linear level that we have seen and recognized from our past and from around us. Source is limitless. The potentiality is without bounds. Because you don't know how circumstances can unfold doesn't mean that they're going to turn out badly. Try taking your foot off the brake and allow Source to show you the amazing display of unlimited potentiality. If this is a pattern, you may want some help with releasing it. If you're ready to shift into your best life, visit lesliefontaine.com and let's talk about unfolding all that you want to be, do, and have. You'll find sessions, classes, and audio products to help remove the blocks and move you into that potential. And listen to my show, Sheer Alchemy, on Transformation Talk Radio, Wednesdays at 10 Pacific, 1 Eastern. 
Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Are you anxious, worried, or insecure? Hi, I'm Dr. Friedman Schaub. I'm the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution. Join me for my next breakthrough video seminar, which starts on September 10th. This program has helped thousands of people worldwide to overcome their struggles with anxiety, and I'm certain it can also help you. If you're ready to be free again and have a stronger foundation of inner peace and confidence, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. Francine Vale is a being of light. She believes that all people of planet Earth are as well. As co-host of the Angel Healer radio show, Francine teaches you heart-centered ways to manifest healing on your own behalf and how to integrate love more fully into your daily life. Connect with your angels as you find your life flowing with ease and harmony. Walk the path of light with Francine and Dr. Pat Basili every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. And we are back. This is Leslie Fontaine. This is Sheer Alchemy. And this is the show about transforming energy. This is about shifting out what we're ready to uh, release. And, you know, often when we release some comfort zones like fear, and I do call that a comfort zone, there's a lot of grief with that. You know, these things have protected us through a lot of our lives. We don't need to shame ourselves that we didn't get over it, you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever. There is no shame in this and there's no guilt. You know, often we don't want to release some things because of abandonment or because we, you know, we we owe some people. I know a lot of veterans, you know, who, you know, lost their buddies in combat and they and they carry their memory with them for a long time because you know letting go of them is like forgetting them and we don't want to forget and so how do we you know bring that legacy you know into completion and not dishonor the memory of the loved ones so often we have a very you know extreme view of stepping into our new lives as if we are abandoning um, loved ones in order to be true to ourselves and I really want you to examine that within yourself today that's just huge resonance came through the back of my neck on this one so this is very important to some people is that being who you are does not mean that you abandon your loved ones and abandoning your loved ones does not uh, happen because you you know choose to move on with your life or do something else you may be overly involved you may be you know doing really a very enabling kind of codependent thing where you know uh, it gives you a reason to get up in the morning and this is your purpose and you know in a way you use it as an excuse not to step into your truth we've all been there so I'm not talking about anything that is a slam to anyone but take a look at the part of you that is choosing to hold back on stepping into your full potentiality, you know, because it's a scary thing to think that you might do it on your own. Remember when an inspired idea comes to you, it's coming to you and it's by yourself, right? Nobody else is in there when it comes into your spirit and gets dropped into your spirit. It's not a group event. So sometimes we get afraid because we feel alone with it and we think immediately, well, who will support me? Who will be there for me? So we want to bring in Ascended Masters and Archangels, allow the presence of the support team so that you can realize that even in your own dreams, your own thoughts, your own passions, your own desires, that the loved ones can come in and be fully supportive of you. And it may look like you have no one in the physical at the moment, but that's because you've drawn these energies up to this point. Now, when we shift your energy, we draw in new support. Often, you know, I uh, I can admit that I have, you know, done many things all by myself. So I'm not the best at receiving help. So I've had to learn a lot about that part of myself going, okay, what am I afraid of? 
What am I afraid of that if I need help, you know, will I know how to draw in the right help? Will I know how to um, draw in energies that are, you know, can can deal with all the aspects of the uncertainties that I experience as I'm flushing out an idea? So, you know, take a look at these parts of you that are coming up that have resisted things. And maybe you've told a different story about why you don't receive help or why you don't step into a dream or you want to blame the one you're taking care of and, you know, blame your finances and, you know, all kinds of things and justify the reason you're not stepping into all that you are because of all these other things that are holding you back. And I want to tell you that it's a truth that you allow that to hold you back. You're not wearing any handcuffs. Nobody is holding you there in handcuffs. So it's a choice. Now, to take it to an extreme, which is what many of us do, we go to the other extreme and you go, well, I can't just abandon them. Well, you're automatically assuming that you are the only caregiver, you are the only solution, that source will never come through for you, that there is no such source. You know, a lot of us talk a really good game about our spirituality. We love to talk about spirituality, but then when the rubber hits the road or there's an opportunity to manifest, we act like we're completely on our own and it doesn't even exist. We want guidance to come in. We want psychics to tell us what's going on. But then we don't want to believe that there's actual support in the universe, that there's actual support on the energetic level for who we are. So try this out today. Often it's our abandonment energies that are speaking to us. So let's bring in the powerful support from the light realm so that we can experience what it's like to feel fully loved in our choices and without judgment. I'd like to create a protected space for you right now, for you to have your dream, to have your desire. And let's put all of the concerns, the anxieties, the pain, the anguish outside that circle. Let's move it out for a second and let's allow you to feel fully protected and cared for right now. Notice what that feels like to be fully loved, to fully be fully cared for without anyone else's needs or desires or opinions impinging on your field. At first, it feels a little empty because we've learned to crowd our field with all of this other clutter. So we've decluttered and it feels a little empty. And now let's ask ourselves, what do we truly desire to step into? What do we truly desire to create right now? And notice what comes up for you. Is it a choke? Is it fear? Do you get the idea? Do you get the inspiration? Is it clear as day? Either one is fine. And now just allow the support to come in for you. And allow yourself to release any of these agreements and cords that keep you from stepping in to your opportunity. Notice the fear that comes up. And again, invite in the masters and archangels to be there to protect you, to care for you. And continue to allow that vision to appear for you. Sometimes, When we go through the tunnel of creation, we hit another block and then another block. And if we haven't been taught, and no one has showed us how, we stop at these blocks. We don't move forward because we think they shouldn't be there. We think it should just be easy. We think all these blocks should just disappear because if it was really source, if it was really the divine guiding us in this direction, then we wouldn't have any of these impediments. But these are impediments within ourselves that are ready to be healed. They're not there to present a stop. They're not there to keep you from stepping into your dream. They're there and they're showing up to be healed. When you look at it like that, that's when the doors begin to open. That's when you allow yourself to persist and to continue down that path into action. So I hope after today, you'll take a look at some of the fear that's holding you back, some of the rationalizations and justifications that are in your life, and you'll ask yourself if you want to hold on to them, and then you'll allow yourself to experience the support of the light realm, 
and you'll give yourself a chance to say yes. And when you encounter a block, you'll allow yourself to say yes to moving through it. This is Leslie Fontaine. I hope you'll stay in touch. If you're interested in working with me or getting more information, you can go to lesliefontaine.com or call me at 675-678-665-3366. I look forward to hearing from you, to working with you, and to supporting you in your work to move through these obstacles that perhaps have been with you for so much of your life that you truly are ready to release. And maybe you never knew you could, but you truly can. Until next time. You've been listening to the hit show, Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Tune in each month to Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine to stir up your passions, remove your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Gifted, shifted, and powerful is what this show is about. Visit TransformationTalkRadio.com and LeslieFontaine.com for showtimes and dates. Contact Leslie at LeslieFontaine.com to schedule a transformative session that removes your blocks so that you can say yes to explosive abundance you will not be the same the preceding audio was via a skype call